Hi, my name's Grant. I work for Schwalbe Tires UK. I've been with the company for seven years and you may have met me at some of the events and races that we support. In this video, we're going to look at tubeless and first of all, identifying are my tires and wheels tubeless compatible. With Schwalbe tires, we try to make it as clear as possible whether your tires are or aren't tubeless compatible. What you'll see with our tires is it's clearly indicated on the side wall whether it is or isn't a tubeless tire. We have two options with tubeless compatible tires and they are TLE tubeless easy and TLR tubeless ready. With gravel and road tires what you'll notice on the side wall to indicate that it is a tubeless tire is what we call the little flag shown here on the side of the tire. TLE written in the flag in orange. A similar thing with our mountain bike tyres, a little bit more obvious possibly. We have tubeless easy, TL easy, written on the sidewall here in silver. Just below the description of the carcass of the tyre. The other option we have in our range is the tubeless ready option. This is reserved for performance line tyres and it's just an indication of the product quality. TLR written in this tab on the sideboard here. With the tour segment tyres there's one option available which is a TLE tyre and that is our marathon all motion. New bikes that state that they are tubeless or tubeless ready may come to you not completely set up tubeless. They may come with tubeless rims and tubeless tires, but possibly not tubeless taped on the rim. It's worth checking this before setting them up. They may even come supplied with inner tubes just for transport use. We're now gonna look at setting the wheel up tubeless. First thing to do is make sure you have a clear working space and the correct tools at hand. Whilst we have a little more than we need on display here, the main things you'll need for setting up your wheels tubeless are some isopropylene alcohol. Disc brake cleaner can also work, but just be conscious that it can sometimes leave some residue. Isopropylene alcohol will evaporate and leave a clean surface. I'll explain more about that later. A pair of scissors to cut your tubeless rim tape. a ruler or vernier caliper to measure the internal width of the rim. You may possibly need tyre levers. And there's a few extra things here which I'll show as we go through for a few top tips as well. So, it's important to remember when we're setting these up, we are demonstrating this on a mountain bike rim, just because it's larger, a little bit easier to show you, but the process is exactly the same with road and gravel wheel sets as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is identify what width tape that we need. So in this case, we need to measure the internal rim diameter. So with a vernier caliper or a ruler or a tape measure, you can measure the internal rim diameter, and in this case, it's a 30 mil rim in, uh, diameter. So we recommend going two millimeters wider with the tape. So in this case, a 32 mil tape, just to allow a little bit of overlap in the rim well. So what we're gonna do, clean rag, we're gonna spray some of the isopropylene alcohol onto this. And we're just gonna clean our rim. So I would start at the valve hole, just so you know how far you've gone round for each rotation, just so you don't lose track. It's important to keep the rim bed clean when you're applying new rim tape just so the tape adheres properly. Last thing you want when setting up tubeless is that the tape comes undone, allowing air and sealant to get underneath it. It can cause a bit of a mess. So preparation is key. It's 
set aside that's pretty clean and as you can see on the rag it's taken quite a lot of dirt off so the tape should adhere a lot better because of doing so. With the tape, find the start of the tape, a little tip that I do, I cut a 45 degree angle at the beginning of the tape just so it makes life a little bit easier if you ever need to remove it so you can pick it up off the rim just a little bit easier. I would recommend starting opposite the valve hole, so six o'clock on the clock if you will. So I'd flip the wheel over, valve at the bottom, find the rim join about 10 centimetres past it. I would start with the rim tape. And the idea here is just pull a bit of tension into the tape as you're rotating it. So the rim and the tape well, the tape follows the contour of the rim. Just hold your fingers each time you go, move your fingers along the tape for each rotation. Just to ensure the tape isn't unravelling. So we're half, nearly halfway. So in this instance, with this rim, we'll only probably need one full revolution of tape with the overlaps over the join, about 10 centimetres. You may find with some wheel sets, some rims, that you may require extra rim tape just to create a tighter fit between the rim and tyre. Again, with the same process, I would cut a 45 degree angle in the tape, just so if you ever have to remove it, it's easier to find it on the rim. There we are. So, now we've taped our rim, find the valve hole, and what we'll do is we'll get our valve, making sure that we've got the correct length valve for the rim type that we've got, this has a 20 mil section rim, so we're using a 40 mil length valve. What I would do is remove the dust cap, remove the washer and the O-ring. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the valve core in, done up, so the pin in the center is exposed. And with the valve, well, what I'll do is I'll just push it through just to mark the tape where I'm going to puncture the rim tape to put the valve core through. This just shows that you're getting the hole in the right place and it's straight. So a little mark like that, remove it. You can see a little dimple in the rim. Then what I'll do with my hand, clear my hand of those, put the valve core over the little marker and you should just be able to push it through with your thumb like so, through the rim like that. Firstly put the rubber washer on, this will protect the rim from the, uh, the threaded washer which tightens the valve. Roll it up, I normally push a little bit of pressure on the top of the valve as you're tightening up just so it tightens fully into the rim bed. If you feel that you need to tighten the, rim up, uh, the valve up further on the rim, there's a four mil Allen key hole in the top of the Schwalbe valves. You can place an Allen key in it, pop it in like so to hold the valve in place so you can tighten the valve up a little bit more by hand. That should be enough. Any more than that, you could risk damaging the rim if you're doing it up as tight as you possibly can. Now that we've taped our wheel and fitted the valve, we can look at mounting the tire. The tyre I'm going to be mounting today is a 29 by 2.4 mountain bike tyre. A little tip, if you have time on your side, it is a good idea to unpackage the tyre the night before, just to allow the tyre to settle, because it's a folding tyre, when it's folded up in the box, the bead can crease, 
It's good to get those creases out and it will just make mounting that little bit more easy for you. So, something I like to do with my wheels when I set them up tubeless, I like to align the valve with the logo. This can be a bit of a personal preference. Personally, I like to align it between the W and A on Schwalbe, so it's in the middle of this logo. Some people like to line it up with some of the information that's on the tire or even the pressure markings on the tire as well. I personally, like I say, will mount it in the middle of the main logo here. The other thing we need to identify is that we're mounting the tire correctly in its correct rotational direction. This is printed on the side wall of the tire. So if we have a little scroll around and have a look. There's a little logo embossed on here on the side wall with the direction, directional arrow showing which way it needs to rotate. Mountain bike tires, our Addix compound tires are indicated with a color compound stripe. This will always be on the non-drive side of the bike, indicating the rotational direction as well. So, get our logo aligned. We get our wheel with the valve. So, between the W and A, we've got our side on. And we just gently just start tucking the bead of the tire onto the rim. And you'll notice it'll start getting tight like this. It's quite difficult just to do by hand. Don't be scared to use tire levers at this point. There's no inner tube to pinch. You don't have to worry about that. We recommend the use of plastic tire levers. Metal tire levers can damage your rims. Also plastic tire levers will stop you putting too much force into the rim. But just also be careful not to be, if you're having to force it on, it's probably a bit too tight and there's other things you can look at. We'll mention those in another video. So we're at this point where it's a little bit tight. We'll flip our wheel around to make it a little bit easier. Tire lever, whilst holding the edge of the rim, just to stop chasing it around. And we'll just pop in the tire on as we go round to get the final mounting point. So as you can see, we're just using the tire lever here to work the bead on for the last section of the tire. So we've got the tire half mounted. Now we just need to do the same with the other side. This should be a little bit easier and you may not need to use tire levers. Starting opposite the valve and finishing at the valve because that should be the slackest point of the tire. Working our way round. So the tire is mounted. A couple of things just to check is that the beading is actually over the valve. And as you can see here, it's caught on the top of the valve. So what we want to do is make sure that, that bead is over the valve, completely enveloping it. So tire is mounted, the rim is taped, valve is securely fitted. So now what we want to do is inflate the tire just to make sure that the tire seats correctly. And this is before we fit any sealant. Just something to note, this tire was relatively easy to fit. But if you ever find that the tire is particularly tight, you can make your life a little bit easier by making sure that the bead of the tire is right in the rim well center. That is the lowest point of the rim and give you the most room to move the tire around. So, now to inflate the tyre, with tubeless setups you want the most flow into the tyre you can get. We recommend removing the valve core. There are a number of types of valve core remover. 
With your tubeless valves, you'll have this smaller plastic valve core tool. This will work perfectly fine. With our bottles of Dock Blue, you will get these slightly more robust metal ones with a knurled edge, so a little bit easier to use and something you can keep in your toolkit for future use. So we're going to pop that onto the Presta valve core and we're just going to remove it here. Making sure we don't lose it, put it somewhere safe. The last thing you want to be doing with air rushing around and deflating the tire is trying to find your valve core. So keep it somewhere safe. I often put it inside the rim tape so it shouldn't roll away anywhere. In this workshop, we're fortunate we have a compressor. This makes life pretty easy. It gives a good flow of air when setting up tubeless, just to give you a bit of an easy life. However, I'm pretty confident with all my tubeless setups that I will be able to use just a standard track pump as well, because the tire has got quite a nice snug fit. It should just inflate with a track pump. So, so we can see the pressure gauge, the head of the compressor, pop it onto the valve, make sure we're holding the wheel tight. Inflate, not too hard. And then what we're gonna do, just hold our finger over the valve, pop our pump down, and just check that the tire is inflated correctly. Quite often you hear a loud ping noise when this happens with tubeless, quite a satisfying noise. You know the tire is seated correctly. And we're just gonna inspect. And the main thing to check, you've got this little line just above the bead of the tire going round. And that'll indicate that the tire is seated correctly. If it's not fully exposed and it's not even all the way round, you know that the tire hasn't seated correctly. And we'll come to a little tip of making sure the tire is seated at the end of this video. So we're just gonna let the air out just slowly. In this case, the tire has remained on the bead, which is great. If it does come off the bead of the rim, which it's just done then, don't worry, that's normal. We've seen that the tire will fit the bead correctly. So we've now established that the tire will go up and hold air. So what we now need to do is add our tubeless sealant. Dock Blue is the tubeless sealant we recommend with our tires. We recommend with mountain bike wheels, the use of 60 millilitres per wheel. This 500 ml bottle makes life a bit easier filling up the smaller 60 ml bottles. Before you do this, it's important to really shake the sealant well. There's particulates in the sealant that help clog the holes for when you do get a puncture. So it's important to really shake it up, making sure you're not spilling it, make sure the cap's on properly so you don't make a mess. Turn it upside down, really give it a shake. Make sure all those particulates have moved and settled, the ones that were settled at the bottom are no longer so. Pop the cap open, cap off our smaller bottle. What you'll notice is quite handy, there's a little ridge on the end of this bottle and this spout that'll actually click in to the top of the large bottle and you can actually turn it upside down. Obviously keep hold of it when you're filling it up, you don't want to make a mess, but it just makes filling up the smaller bottle a little bit easier. I just squeeze the bottle, it gets the air out of it, and then you're just squeezing it in. And then it, you'll hear it filling up the smaller bottle. Just repeat, squeezing the larger bottle to fill it up till you're confident that it's pretty full. Turn it back over. Pretty mess-free way filling the bottle up. Remember to close the lid on this one, so if anything does happen and you knock it over, you're not going to make a mess. So we've got our full bottle. We'll find our valve. What I would recommend somewhere, you know, not at the kind of six o'clock mark, but more at the eight or four o'clock mark to fill it up. Valve core's removed, pop the bottle on and just squeeze it in. You'll hear it kind of glug as the air escapes from it. Just let it do that, squeeze it through. That's two. You can kind of hear it sloshing now. We're pretty confident all the sealant's in there. So there we are. 
sealant added to the tyre. What we'll now do is reinflate the tyre with our sealant in there. With a little trick with this one, just keep your finger near the valve because when you remove the pump you want to try and keep the air in there. So we'll show you that. Same as before, compressor on. Just slowly inflate and as you can see the bead of the tyre was just unravelling around it. Pretty confident, no pops this time, but you, like I say, you might find some pops happen with it, that's normal. You know the tyre's seating correctly then. We're just gonna remove the pump, put our finger over the valve hole. It doesn't matter if you lose some air here, because you can obviously just reinflate it afterwards. So we've got our valve core in the valve core tool, and we're just gonna pop it into the valve. Nipped up nice and tight. Just to make sure that the sealant's got, un got everywhere in the tyre, it's good just to ro rotate the wheel, give it a good shake. Just make sure it's covering everywhere. No need to go too crazy, that should be enough. Because obviously when you start riding, the rotation will do the work for you. So, before we mount our wheel back on our bike, we just need to do a last minute inspection to make sure everything's safe and secure. So as I mentioned, it's important to check that the bead of the tire is sat correctly on the rim. And as we can say, we can use this line, this marker here, and just check all the way around that it's even to show that the tire is seated correctly. And we'll check both sides of the wheel just all the way around and we're confident that the tyre is seated correctly, fitted correctly, it's got sealant and air in it and it's ready to ride. We'll pop our dust cap back on and once it's back on the bike we'll just check our pressures. There's a video about tyre pressures, also with mountain bike tyres, our website has the Pressure Prof to help you with tubeless tyre pressure setup. If you have a tyre that's a little tougher carcass like this one is, and it's struggling to slip from the centre of the wheel well into the shoulder of the rim, we do have a product in our range to help with that. We have a product called Easy Fit. This is a mounting fluid. So what this does is it lubricates the bead of the rim, helping the tire slip in place. This is a little more than just soapy water. This will actually evaporate once the tire is seated. Unlike soap, which can leave a residue, can actually cause mounting issues further down the line. As you can see, as I've applied here, the sponge applicator gives a bit of a foam to the solution, making it easy to spread as you're going round the rim. So what we'll do is just apply that all the way round the rim. As you can see, every so often, just kind of pumping the bottle just to get a bit more fluid out, get a bit more foam with it. And what you might actually find with it as well, where you've got a tire that's got a little bit of a looser fit on the rim, it'll actually help create a better seal. So inflating the tire and mounting should be a bit easier also. Now that I've applied the easy fit to both sides of the rim, you can see here, we're ready to inflate the tire. You might find that you have a stubborn rim and tyre combination when it comes to demounting the tyre from the rim. In this case, we've got a downhill tyre on a wide mountain bike rim that's proving hard work to demount. So what we've done here to protect the wheel and the surface we're working on, we've put a protective mat down just so we don't damage anything. So what I'm going to do is have the tyre just overlap the table slightly, my weight on the top to counter me pushing down on the tyre 
So to try and pull it off the rim. That kind of pop sound, pretty successful sound when you hear that. You can hear air escaping as I'm pushing the rim down. Just slowly rotating the rim, just so you get all the tire bead off the rim. And as you can hear, tire escaping now. The tire is successfully unmounted from this side of the rim. And then just repeat the process for the other side. Just as a word of caution, if it is tubeless and set up with sealant, just be aware that sealant can leak. So an apron or old clothes you don't mind getting dirty is recommended. Hear that pop again. So you can just hear the bead snapping off the rim. And we're back now at the process where the tire is in the center of the wheel well and should make life easier popping the tire off either with your hands or carefully with tire levers. If you have any questions regarding tubeless mounting, demounting, or if you have a particular case that's a bit more unusual and you're struggling, please feel free to email us or put a comment below.